so I'm uh, currently working on these uh, tunnel entrances. I've done a bit of priming on this one, but I'm, uh, I'll just do a little bit more, and you can see, and then I'll show you the process of how I turned a tunnel entrance that looked like that, tunnel entrances that look like this. This one's still drying a little bit, and I've yet to go over this one with a, a, a coat of uh, matte. That's what I want to do. I've got my uh, retaining walls there as well, and a uh, single tunnel entrance. So it's looking pretty realistic. Yeah. I'm just going to put on a, another coat of the primer and get this thing to stay up. This is the good thing about this primer is it, it dries pretty quick as well. Still see it's a bit wet. The good, uh, good thing I love about air uh, air brushing is that it does dry nice and quick. And a good tip is that you know when you're doing it, if it starts to look wet, move to a different area because that's how you'll avoid all that horrible spidering and splodging everywhere. So yeah, obviously mask up the inside as well. So you don't get primer or any different colours on the, that part of the tunnel entrance. So that's a nice surface that I know the paint will stick to. It doesn't like shiny surfaces, so you're best getting a primer on this before you, you do any painting. And it will, uh, you know, it will look better once it's done. You'll be all the more pleased with it. I'm sorry the light's not too good. I'm doing this in the night time. Uh, so I'm just using uh, my lamps. So the first lot of colours I want to use on spraying this up is Signal Red, it's for laser, Signal Red, that's, uh, that's going to be for most of that colour, and a bit of dark green as well, shove some of that in there, and then just to uh, give it some body, a bit of sea grey. Dark sea grey, even so the lids on tight. Had a big accident earlier with the black paint. As you can see, my wall is not very happy. Uh, so, give it all a damn good shake. And what I shall do actually is just clean out this uh, cup. Right, so I'm going to start with a bit of water in there first. And send out a little bit of red, a couple of drops of that. Sorry, I'm trying to hold my uh, phone at the same time, it's not totally so easy. A little bit of dark green, blow of that. And uh, finally, a little bit of the dark sea grey. I'm just uh, touching up some areas now with some slate grey uh, pigment. Just coming into some of the more lively areas, like where you get a lot of build-up of soot and stuff, and that will give me something nice to spray over as well, so that the paint sticks out a bit more of a 3D fashion. I think it's important to get these parts. Well, it's important to get it all right on the on a model, but something as important as the you know the brickwork on a on a tunnel, it can really give you a difference between your model looking um you know really beginnerish which I'm not can you know I'm not saying that I'm anything more than that at all but just some models that I've seen 
can it can really make a big difference. Wow, I mean to me that looks uh, really really cool, and I'll still probably go over that with a just a wee bit of uh, matte finish, and then I'll put on the soot and stuff, you know, from the from the chimneys. And the inside is just a uh, like plastic plastic brick. It was already red. I just sprayed a little bit black. Uh, it kind of looks quite real, just from, you know, get the right angle. I've uh, got a bit of plastic in there that I need to cut away, but other than that, it's looking quite cool. Dead pleased with it. Working on the single tunnel, just brushing in some of this uh, pigment. Just creating a more 3D weathering effect important because it's soaking up some of that um, wash I put a wash over it to get into all those grooves and that wash always seems to be quite shiny again you know there's obviously other ways of doing this uh, that's a wee bit better just small touches yeah Brilliant. So I guess the next thing I'll do is the uh, retaining walls. Just go through all of these and dust them up a bit. But yeah, still waiting for the paint to dry on uh, that one. I'll give this another coat now, and then that'll be ready for the um, all the highlights. quite got the consistency right on the paint but uh, for now that's probably okay I'll probably finish that one off tomorrow I've got some better light I have uh, just been putting the highlights on now um, on this tunnel entrance so we'll get a better light which you can now see and what I'm going to do I'll just blend that with a with a dry brush a white dry brush once that's dry a bit better, um, and then I will go over it with a kind of a browny green green colour, just a light mist on it, to start blending it all a bit more. Um, and then I'll seal all that in with a uh, with a gloss varnish, and that should start looking like the other ones. This is the one that's going to go on the far side of the layout, uh, next to the the bridge at the back. Um, that should. You know, it's coming together quite nicely, so I've got my paintbrush here. Um, so again, I'm just painting some of these individually. So it's a wee bit of white paint, and uh, you just kind of come in and just paint these blocks individually. It doesn't have to be uber neat, again, because it's going to be, it's all going to be blended in a bit better, so it doesn't look so... Uh, Blocky. So I'm just going to do a little bit of dry brushing now, and all you do is you just get your get the paint on your on your brush like this, and then get as much of it off as you can. Might be a little bit wet actually. Try again. Just get as much of it off as you can. See how this one goes anyway. And then you just just start kind of blending stuff really already it's uh, starting to look much better got the brush a bit more dry now the dry not wet so you just get the paint on there and get as much off as you can just so you've got like a small amount left uh, in the bristles you can barely see it and then you just come in 
and start going over this and it will just start picking up those highlights and give it more of a a worn, worn look which is what you want that's looking quite nice actually so I'll get a wet down the bottom there get rid of that, but that's okay I need to do the same on the top just just go over it and it will just start to pick up some of the areas that need to be picked up right. get some of the edge here I like it when it, the white just just makes the the shape stand out I think that's pretty good moment and it's going to be on the far side of the layout anyway um, so maybe it's cool that the, the colours are slightly more vibrant I don't know some people think you should have things less clear and slightly smaller the further away it is to get some kind of depth and I do tend to agree with that uh, but it's hard to know really whatever works for you and uh, and your layout this I guess is gonna gonna work for me pretty cool liking that all right give that a moment to kind of dry and I'll prepare some sort of greeny brown paint just to give it a once over with that and then I'll seal that in with uh, just with some Vallejo uh, matte varnish nice and easy okay, remember to shake this stuff up when you use it and uh, don't have a big accident if you've got a block in it in the paint um, unblock it don't squeeze it to death because you'll end up spraying the wall uh, black like I did yesterday and that's uh, not cool just in case any of you are wondering in the background that's my uh, my Hercules that I'm working on and she's uh, looking mighty fine that's going to be a, a nice model when that's done my first Hercules actually so I've been learning a lot along the way but it's uh, especially with weathering and stuff I've got a little bit over the overzealous with, <laughs> with the uh, the panel lining but you know I can dull that down a bit later on and anyway I, li I like these kind of military aircraft kind of looking nice and used and like they just come back from uh, the desert or somewhere you know just nice and uh, muddy on the bottom and you know so I'll, I'll I'll make that I'll fade it all a little bit so I'm just uh, putting some of the uh, some of the earthy earthy brown on That's uh, looking a bit better now. And again, I'll just get some um, some pigments going on that. And uh, but first, I'll give it. I'll seal that all in, just so that it looks uh, the way it should do. Oh, I'll uh, I'll put a wash on it first as well, darken it down a wee bit more. But I think I've got all the different colours kind of going on on there. Okay. So yep, that'll be next up. Yeah, looking at that now. It's. Uh, it's got a pretty good colour on but that's only because that one hasn't got that extra layer on so I'll just extra layer of wash so I'm just going to put that wash on now and for this I will use uh, I'll use the Bellagio dark grey for this uh, which should be good enough Diamond, I need your help. Could you step over here a minute? so this is a Sounds simple enough. slightly lighter coloured wash I'm going to do two so that's the first uh, wash on and I'm going to put another one on there bring out the color a bit more but just again keep it away from being too vibrant and with each one it's starting to just uh, look a lot more realistic it really really is I'm really happy with these and again once I get some um, some kind of growth, you know, plant life growing up the side and here and there. It will uh, 
it will really come into its own, I think. I like the fact that I've got this little black lip on there as well. I'm going to keep that on because I think that really brings out a lot more of it. Some, uh, some steam and soot, soot marks going at the top. And then I think I'll be quite happy with those. I've done. I've got a bit more uh, weathering on the, the sides there, on the retaining walls. Whether I use them or not. I don't want to uh, rub off any of the wash that's gone in between all the brickwork because that's what gives it its nice grimy, sludgy look. That's great. So what I want to do here is uh, continue some weathering on this track leading into the tunnel entrance. Then I can, once that's dry, I can clean it all up and I can actually then get the tunnel entrances glued in place which means I can then start building uh, uh, the hillside. Okay, so um, first initial glance of uh, the weathering of the track leading up into the tunnel entrances. Not bad. Again, like when I did this area here, it looks a bit too dark at first, but I'm quite confident that using the same colours, it's just I'm using black and a bit of uh, mud brown. Might not be the right thing to do, but it's what I've got in stock, and that's. I think I can neaten that up with the with some of the grass and stuff like that. Um, I'll, I still want to keep some of the grey in there for the ballast so you get that definition. And again, you know, you've got to remember that weathering is not is, is in no way uniform. If it starts to look too uniform, um, it'll look like a, a train set. I've got that brick pathway uh, looking a little bit better now. Some sort of weathering on it. And I wanted to also get a, a change in the ballast, so you can see over here it's a normal kind of grey ballast. Comes across, and then you've got a mixture of the grey and the black here in this more kind of industrial zone. And then that will kind of lead off into the the normal grey ballast again, going into the rest of the railway. Um, and you can see it there as well. It's not too bad. Uh, yeah. I think I'll get some... Um, this stuff here, I like this, uh, where is it, this Tamiya Weathering Master, I like using the snow, actually, you can see where some of the track's gone a bit white, I use that to pick out, uh, like the grains in the wood and things, and, and again on some of the chairs, so I'll use that here and there, just to dull down the, or brighten up the, the blackness a little bit. Uh, so the next we thing I've done is, um, just made some kind of smoky, sooty uh, marks on this. It's still a bit wet at the moment. Um, before I did that, I also put a little bit of uh, the pigment on, just because it's got some uh, this stuff here. Just because it's got some three Dness to it, because it's a real thing rather than just wet. Um, and I'll go over that again, just to really bring that out but make it like it's more something that's been sprayed on there over years of use rather than just put on with a nice thin clean uh, airbrush Tunnel entrances in place, a little bit of rock, a bit of scatter. 
just got this initial kind of surface face uh, up and running. I've got all that lot to do yet, but um, I've also started putting in a, an embankment here, which I thought I'd bring down to about there. And that also covers the, um, the, 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 the terminal points where the, the, the power goes to. So that's all drying at the moment. Clean the rails off. Uh, and then all I need to do is just go back in and weather uh, the, the track and it's sort of immediate. You see I've got, because I've got new ballast going on there as well, so I'll just go in and weather that off a bit. So it's not so new looking. And I decided to just put one of the uh, retaining walls there. To, uh, I'll glue two together. So that will be a nice little thing. And then I've got that other one there at a slight angle. A couple of rocks in place, just something to work with for now. Yeah, I think I'll put that retaining wall in. Just the, the regular one, I think. Rather than a proper big one coming across, I think, I think that's I don't think it's needed and I, and I don't want to um, anything to get in the way of a nice viewing point there, nice scenery. So I'll bring it down just a wee bit, a little bit further, perhaps down to here or something, you know, something not so, uh, not so big. And again we'll just have a bit of nice grassy rocky wall, a couple of trees around that, it will look um, Absolutely brilliant. 